holy moly, so many people on a stormy day in New York and a Jewish holiday. I'm so, uh, I'm so thankful you could be here. And, uh, and wow, this is incredible. I've never been here, and these are beautiful books. Um, my God, it's a little hot in here. Do you mind if I uh, take off my mask? Thank you. Ah, thank God, it was a little hot. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for, for being here and for, for braving the, the storm out there. Um, it's so nice. I, I think it's, it's a beautiful thing uh, that with all the bad things going on in the world right now that uh, there's a, over 100 people sitting in a room uh, talking about love. I think that's really amazing. And, um, oh my God, there's so many. Does anyone have the dark between stars? So many. <laughs> yes, I love that. Thank you so much for buying that. Um, <laughs> So tonight I'd love, to, I'd love to read some poems, and throughout that I'd love to stop a few times and, and turn it to you and, and hear any questions you might have or comments. Um, and at the end, I'd love to leave enough time to meet all of you, to hear your stories, and if you want to take photos or I can sign your books, I would love to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I, and I love this. <laughs> I wish you could see my lips so I could talk to you, but um, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any more. <laughs> don't have any more masks underneath. Um, yeah, so I would love to, to, just, to just begin and, and read some, some poems for you. I thought this one was a good one to start with. New York is the quietest city I know. Only among a million beating hearts could you still hear the cigarette burn on a balcony in Brooklyn. If I had all the treasure in the world, I would follow my dreams, play with my children, and spend time with my wife. No, said the old man, if you followed your dreams, played with your children and spent time with your wife, you would have all the treasure in the world. My sweet darling, all these tears, this hurt, the pain in your heart, do not fight it anymore. It is a gift, you see, to feel this much. And even though it's hard, it means you're alive. With each of these tearful breaths gasps, your soul awakens more alive in the pain than you were in the numb. You are coming back to me now, my love, lucid in this darkness. So cry aloud, yell and fall, and I will be here waiting to catch you when the waking up is done. It took me a long time to realize that I'm happiest not at the parties, at the dinners, or the shows, but at home with you and just our books, our movies, and our tea. And wherever we go, for now and forever, we will bring this happy with us. For home lives inside us now, wherever together we go. I'm so sure I'm gonna have a daughter. I don't know why that is, but uh, <laughs> I don't even have a girlfriend, but I'm sure that I'm gonna have a daughter at some point. Um, and I wrote this poem for her, whoever she becomes. Daughter of mine, for your smiles, for your tears, for your skin knees and your broken hearts, for the love you give and the love you find, for whatever you become or don't, it is far too late. I love you already, long before we ever meet. Uh, I actually have a funny story. So I wear a mask, I'm sure you noticed. But um, when I started, I started writing anonymously. And um, I came home uh, about two years after I'd started writing and started posting on the Atticus account. And I uh, came home for Christmas, and I saw my sister. And we were talking, and she started telling me about this poet she was following online named Atticus. 
And she'd been following me for two years and I had no idea. And I was so thankful that she didn't send me any messages because it would have been so awkward. <laughs> Diverting love notes from your sister. It just been so weird. Um, anyways, um, a little time after that, she was getting married and, and she asked me to write a poem for a love prayer of some sort for her, for her wedding. And so this is the poem that I wrote and it's called My Fate. Does the sun promise to shine? No, but it will, even behind the darkest clouds. And no promise will make it shine longer or brighter, for that is its fate, to burn until it can burn no more. So to love you is not my promise. It is my fate, to burn for you until I can burn no more. All right, I have one more poem from Lover Wild. Has anyone read Lover Wild? You have, yeah, great, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I love these smiles up front, really? You guys just haven't stopped smiling since I walked in and I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's just making me feel good. Um, do you guys have any questions for me before I do this last poem of, the, of Lover Wild? Yes? Yeah. Yes, she eventually found out it was me. Look at your cool hair, you're like Storm from X-Men, it's so good. <laughs> love this, love New York. Um, any more questions? Yes? Where do I draw my inspiration from? Very good question, thank you. I, um, I draw from my life, things I see. Uh, I've always said that the best muse inspires truth over imagination and I've always found that, you know, I could go to Paris, for example, and, and you'll, you'll see in the second book, I write a lot about Paris, and I found, find Paris one of the most inspiring places to be. And if for that reason, it inspires truth over imagination. I, you know, for a writer, it's such a privilege to just go out and just say what you see, and, and it, it, it's poetic just because that's what it is. It's the truth. Um, so, so often I, I inspire it from my life, or I'm, I'm inspired by what I see in my life. Um, however, I use, I, I very often use my imagination as well. I try to imagine what it would feel like to be old and have loved someone your whole life and then to lose them. And what does that feel like? Um, I try to remember back to what, like, first love and that that infinite feeling you have when you're young and, and you're in love and, and that idea that it will last forever. You're so sure, you're so positive that of course it's going to last forever. Um, yeah, so that, thank you. Do you write? Yeah, I do. You do, oh great. And what, where do you get, get your inspiration? Um, same thing, everything around me. Everything. Things around you, yeah. Right? Yeah, cool, do, do you write poetry or what do you, oh amazing, cool. Um, you should, you should, uh, I'd love to read your work. So just uh, DM and I'd love to sh see your account. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, um, in that moment, did you have a poem that goes brushing a girl's hair behind her ear once a day? We'll solve more problems with all those therapists and drugs. And it kind of sounds like you're almost like anti-mental health care. Is that your belief or? Yeah, that's a, yeah, I've never been asked that before. Um, but that's an interesting, I'm certainly not anti health care. I think that, uh, <laughs> or mental health care. Um, no, I think it's kind of more of the idea of, of not this whole, I, I think there's a real problem with over prescribing drugs, drugs and being like, you know, this person is broken, so we need to give him ADHD medication and mute him till he's nothing, you know? I, I really don't believe in, in that. And I think that, that my, what I'm trying to say there is that love will solve a lot more problems than prescribing medicine. It's like, that's not usually the problem, at least in my life, in my experience, in my, you know, my struggles with similar things. It's not been, um, it's not been, uh, hell, the, you know, the pills. It's, it's like human connection is what really brings me back. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. That was very funny. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, or at least for me, find like, safety and comfort in your words, at least from my experience. Oh, thank you. If I have, you know, day I'm feeling like a little bit overwhelmed, like you said, but feeling such big thoughts are so simplistic in your words, where do you find more comfort? 
where do I find my comfort? Um, I find my comfort, and it's kind of what I was saying uh, saying before. I, I find my comfort in, in human connection, in family, in friends. And it took me a long, long time to figure that out. Um, but, you know, in, in this day, it's, it's almost entirely my family and my friends. Absolutely, is where I, is I get my comfort. But thank you. That was very kind of you to say that. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, gosh, the mic. <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um, do, you, do, you ever, do you ever fear that one of the members of your family or friends might reveal your identity? Um, no, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. And, and thank you for that question. It, it, for me, it's not, it's not, like the reason I hide uh, behind a mask or I choose to wear a mask is not because I'm so worried that people will find out who I am. For me, it's, it's always been a symbol and more, more than that, a reminder to, to remind myself to write what I feel and not what I think I should feel and be true to myself. And I felt if I did this anonymously that I, that I could do that better, you know? And I, and I really wanted to write what I thought was true. Um, and so I'm not precious about my identity. It's, it's not, for me, it's not about that. Um, yes, so does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that, yeah. Um, yeah, right in the back. Um, I just want to know if you're going to have more books coming out. <laughs> um, Yes, I, w I would love to. And um, discussing discussing a book three. I've been I've been so into book two, um, so I have a lot of writing to do. But I would I, I'm certainly thinking about uh, a book three. Would you like for me to write a book three? I'll yes. Yeah, so, th thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi. When you are inspired to write, do you find that it comes in creative bursts that are triggered from emotion, or do you dedicate time like okay, now it's time to write because I know oftentimes I'm inspired after a painful moment or an ethereal moment, et cetera, so. Yeah, yeah, that, that is, that's a very good question. And I, I would say it's certainly both. Um, I go, um, I often say that my writing process is staring at a candle waiting for it to say something profound because so much of the time I'm just like waiting for, you know, something to be, inspire me. Um, I, I do, I do write, you know, I'll just be walking down the road and I'll see something and, and I'll start writing. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, wake up in the morning with an idea and, and I'll, I'll start writing. Um, and, but I also put uh, time aside to, to try to write. Um, and that helps a lot. And so often I'll, I'll just write nothing n you know, or not be able to write. And then sometimes I'll, f I'll kind of flow and write a lot, a lot. Um, so it's, it certainly depends, but um, uh, have you ever heard the Bukowski quote that says, don't try, as, an, as advice for writers? And the idea of that is like, at the second you like, sit down and you try to write the best thing you, you can possibly write is, is where you're, you're probably lost, you know? And that, that, I, that's how I've always found it. So I really try to make it, not put too much pressure on it and, and that such. Are you, are you a writer as well? Is that what you mentioned? Yeah, how cool. What kind of things do you write? I've been having in I've been having inspired uh, bursts of poems that have just coming coming to me. So. Oh wow! Beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, when you started writing seriously, did you ever think that it would amount to this, or what was your goal when you started writing seriously? Um, yeah, that's a that's a a great question. No, I definitely did not expect anything. You know, I, I just, I just write, wrote because it, as a creative outlet, I thought it, I thought it was fun, and I've always liked um, turning a phrase. I've always liked words. I've always, you know, I love epigrams and aphorisms and quotes, and um, and so I just wanted to start posting and and um, and sharing sharing my work. But mo mostly, it was, it was a creative outlet, and. Um, to see to see a response has been exceptionally exceptionally hum humbling, definitely. You know, I, f I feel really connected when I when I write something, and so when somebody says that they're connected to it, I feel very connected to them, if that makes sense. Um, 
yeah, so so certainly. It's been it's been very humbling and, and surprising. I, I honestly, and we were talking about this tonight, I, 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 almost before every show, I'm like, I don't think anyone's going to show up. <laughs> and then people sh show up, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't believe people showed up. You know, it's like I've never, I wrote a, I wrote book one, and I and I didn't think anyone was going to read it, and and then I wrote book two, and I didn't think anybody was going to read it, and I never think people are going to show up, and I think it, maybe that's a, a writer thing, or maybe it's a human thing, I don't know, but it's certainly a me thing, um, <laughs> doubt, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, thank you very much for that question. Um, yes, right here in the back. Oh, oh, yeah, we can do that one, and then, yeah, perfect. I'll do one more and then I'll read some more and then we can go back to questions in a minute. I, yeah. Um, have you always been a writer or did you pick it up like later in life and or did you like study it in school or anything? Yeah. Um, I have not always been a writer. I've always uh, If you've read the second book, you may have noticed that I dedicated it to my mother for hiding poetry where I'd find it. Um, and she did an incredible job when I was younger of hiding poetry where I'd find it. She, I think there's a, something about young boys and young girls. Uh, I've, I've found that if their parents tell them to do something when they're young, you probably want to do the opposite. And I was certainly that type of person. And my mom was very aware of that. And so she, she was exceptional at just hiding these kind of things where I'd find it. I'd find Jack Kerouac books in my, in my room and think I found it, you know? It's like, but she was very, very clever in that way, and I owe her, owe her a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, did that answer your question? I can't even remember what the original question was. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll do that, and then I'll, and then I'll read some more. Um, quick question. Have you been in love before? And if you have, would you want to be in love and never to write again because it's too much words? Or would you rather have a muse for the rest of your life? Wow. That is a loaded question. <laughs> but that's a beautiful question. Are you a poet? Because that was, yeah, I thought you might be. Um, Good. Have I ever have I ever been in love? You know, for me, the the kind of definition of of love is something I'm searching for con constantly. Like what it means to be in love. What does love mean? And I think throughout my life, love has changed its definition cons constantly. And you know, when I first held hands with a girl. Um, you know, that was love and that was everything. And that, and that I, I knew was, like I said before, was going to last forever. Um, and now love has grown into something more of, of like mutual commitment and, and vulnerability. And um, so, but to answer your question all the way along, you know, as, as the, I've, my definition of love has changed, I have, I feel like been in those moments, been in, in what I would define as, as as in love, and it was it was the most true thing in those moments, and it was it was love for sure. And so, would I give up all my words for love? Probably, yeah, yeah, because I don't think I, yeah, absolutely. But muse, I like muses too, and I like writing. But <laughs> hard to give up on true love, you know, as however you define it. So, yeah, thank you for that question. What about you? Would you do it? I mean, I've written about 400 pages now, and I haven't showed anyone it, except for some people. Oh, but wow. But I think I would rather lose my words than lose love. You'd, uh, yeah, me too. I think that's an easy one. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so I'm going to read this last poem, and then I'd love to start some, some poems from The Dark Between Stars. What of the firefly, the one I love to chase? And the old man smiled. Love her, he said, but leave her wild. And the old oak tree I love to climb. Love her, he said, but leave her wild. The bird that sings that song I love. Love her, he said, but leave her wild. And the wolf that cries to the old joke moon. Love her, he said, but leave her wild. And the horse that loves to run with storms. Love her, he said, but leave her wild. And what of her, the one I love most? And the old man smiled. Yes, he said, you must love her too, but love her wild and she'll love you. <clears throat> for my mother, for hiding poetry where I'd find it. 
you know, I, I dedicated the first book to SR and, uh, that was a person in my life, uh, who I dated, I dated her, her and I dated for about five years and I owe her a lot of those words and she was certainly my muse. And then unfortunately we broke up and so I thought it a lot safer to dedicate the second book to my mother. <laughs> the sunset seeped off the Seine, dripping down our shoulders and fingers in the, mu in the oranges of the Musée d'Orsay. Cigarette smoke danced in the scattering light as if in symphony, with the orchestra of some far-off conductor, to fall and rise and fall at once the light lilting to our laughs, splitting into a thousand pieces, and we were caught in the center of it, hung among the stars, suspended in the disco ball of space. Um, writing this book, I wanted, to, I wrote my very first poem um, in Paris, and I wanted to go back to, to Paris and continue writing and so I borrowed a friend's apartment and it was a tiny little attic and every day I'd get up and open the window over the rooftops and there's a cathedral right there and I would just uh, write and write and write and I'd drink coffee and and I'd go on walks and just write what I saw and then I'd always end up at a cafe and and drink rosé and my poems would get really really bad <laughs> um, but I, it was important to me and and like I said I I, I, I owe I owe Paris a lot of words. I find it one of, you know, just one of the most inspirational places in the world. Have any of you been? Yeah, yeah, it's a special, special place. I don't work for Paris tourism or anything. I just, <laughs> I really do believe that. There is no excuse I've heard worthy to decline a request by a lady of reasonable morals and pleasant company for a skinny dip under a warm and summer moon. Mon coeur, my heart, you are missing from me. As noticeably as if I woke without a leg. So far away you beat that I must hobble through my day, missing you with missing pieces. Girls are like jazz to me, a kind of mixed up magic music unpredictable but right, as if the notes, however random, were chosen perfectly for that moment, so that when you close your eyes, you can't help but smile and tap your foot to the way they make you feel. It rained in Rome, but when the sun came out, it seemed fresh, like a city made new, and the ruins glimmered reminding me that nothing lasts forever, not kingdoms, not, not cities, not rainstorms. Hopefully this New York rainstorm might uh, not last forever. But I heard it's been very hot here, so the rain is kind of welcome. Is that true? Yeah. This is one of my favorite poems in the book, and I'm, I'm not sure why, but I wrote it about this idea of an old man and an old woman. And the old man is reached the end of his life and he's dying and he's, he's basically saying to her, I've, I've done everything. I've seen everything. I've loved you as much as I could love anybody. And now I, I want to go and it's time for me to go and, and I love you. I've seen comets fall in the black skies of a desert night. I have made wishes on the wind with princes and kings. I have made love to you in the scarlet blanket of a sunset in Spain. I am tired from a life so lived. Give me now the long sleep, and I will say to you, good night, my love, good night. Do you have any more questions? I think everyone's got their phones out. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, as a writer, what hopes do you have for your words to affect change in the world? That's a really, really important question, I think. Um, I hope that, I think one of the, there's, there's a few things. One of the beautiful th things I believe going on uh, right now, and, and I, I feel like there's a, there is a resurgence and in interest in words. Um, and, you know, I think there's pros and cons to this idea of like short form poetry and, and like social media poetry, as they say. 
But one of the biggest pros is exactly that, is that people are getting more interested in, in words. And that's what it took me to get more interested in words, is, is kind of an easy, bite-sized exposure to it. And, and like I've always, I said, I, I love epigrams, I love aphorisms, I love turns of phrase. And I think that it serves as kind of a gateway drug into classical literature. Uh, it certainly can. And I think that is powerful. And I think it's a beautiful thing that we're, that, like I said, with, with, with things going on all over the world, like we're sitting in a room on a stormy night in, in New York talking about, talking about love. I think that's really meaningful. Um, and so how, do I, how would I like to inspire change? I, I want to, the, the biggest compliment I, I can receive is, I read something you wrote, and now I'm writing. And now I wanna, I wanna it, it, it gave me the courage to like write poetry. That's incredible, like that's so, so beautiful, and that means so much to me, and that, you know, just something as simple as me just writing something and posting it could ripple into somebody, and then they'll inspire other people, and then we're all just writing love notes on the internet, and it's a beautiful thing, <laughs> you know? So I, th I think something in, in, in there. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, do you write? Sorry. Oh. I do write. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and how, do, you, do you hope your, your words can inspire or, or, or change, make change? Um, absolutely. Just like you said, writing, um, you know, especially in the social media age, has, you know, affected a lot of change and has, you know, provided people with a lot of access to different types of, um, you know, words and literature, no yeah. matter the scope of them. Um, and so, yeah, you yeah. can save a life. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. It's, it's very important. Yeah, right here, sir. Thanks for running around with this mic, too. You're getting a good little workout. It's good. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite contemporary poets? My um, favorite contemporary poets? Now, that is a good question, because most of my favorite poets uh, are dead. <laughs> um, I love uh, Sylvia Plath and Emily Dickinson and Poe and uh, Bukowski and Jack Kerouac. And, um, I don't, I don't um, follow a lot of uh, the kind of online poets, but I, I you know, I, I really, I think what Rupi does is really impressive. Um, I, Christopher Poindexter is a really close friend of mine, and I think he's one of the most true-to-purpose poets. He's a true poet um, in the sense that he lives it every day, and I, I respect that. Um, it kind of scares me, and I respect it at the same time, you know? He, um, yes, uh, and then, yeah, I mean, the Cleo Wade, and yeah, there's, there's a, there are a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who's, who are your favorite kind of contemporary? Um, I really like Tyler Not Gregson. Oh yeah, I know uh, Tyler. R.M. Drake. Yeah. Um, Ruby Core. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're all they're all very talented. Yeah. yeah, doing their doing their own thing. Love that. Thank you. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where you're at like one of these things and you wish you could take your mask off? And if so, can you give us the details? Of <laughs> what it was. <laughs> uh, what it was. Every time, uh, because it's so hot uh, that I'm sweating. Um, yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. I, I think that I smile a lot, mm -hmm. and I forget that you can't see me smiling. <laughs> And I, I wish that people could see that I'm, that I'm, that I'm smiling, because I, I forget that, that we don't have that connection. But hopefully, you can see my eyes smiling, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so Thank all, you. all the time, though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, Atticus. Uh, I just want to say that I really love all your um, short poems. And as writers, uh, I know that you know, it's so, it's like writing so simple, but it's so complex. Like just writing in general. And I'm sure you've uh, gone through some, um, like a writer's block of some sort to be able to convey human emotions, mm -hmm. such so that everyone can listen to. Have you ever? So two. I have two questions. Have you ever encountered writing? something that you can't exactly word it like in human connection or human emotion mm -hmm. and two um like what are the things that you have been able to tackle and overcame that right. writer's block because as a writer i can sort of like have some struggles their day and i also have friends who are writers themselves and because of that like they've lost their passion for writing and right. i was just wondering if you 
have anything advice as far as yeah it's a, it's a great question and uh certainly i think it's 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 a very uh human thing and a, and a writer's thing to 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 like run into writer writer's block and first of all thank you for that for saying that's very thank nice you. of you yeah um yeah absolutely I, I i i do it a lot i i i can't articulate something right i, I you know I, or i just am blocked entirely and and it was kind of to our to what we were talking about before and um writing in bursts and 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 whatnot but the way i, I tackle writer's block is just to is just to write is just to keep putting that time in because you just you know so often you're like you're not, I'm not in the mood to write or I just don't feel like I, I'm my brain's working right and then you'll start writing and something incredible will happen and um, I also change my um, uh, kind of state a lot like I'll, I'll try writing before I have a coffee or right after a coffee or like I'll go out in nature I find nature and exceptionally free you know <coughs> exceptional um, inspiring um, I'll, you know, I box a lot and I'll go boxing and then I'll come and um, write. And, you know, you're just trying to change your state. But I also, part of my writing process is I have this place that I write and it's like a back house of my house. And I've stiff stuffed this thing full of everything inspiring I, I could uh, I could get my hands on books that inspire me, my typewriter, a, 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 a tobacco pipe, a, you know, like uh, candles and the incense and, and like mo books on Monet and paintings that I love and um, my record player and all my like, you know, different records and everything that I could buy that, that it had, brings me inspiration. Clearly, I can look at something and, and be inspired pictures of Paris and um, and that helps me often get over uh, writer's block. And then the rest of the time, I'm just staring at a candle waiting for it to say something profound, <laughs> pretty much. Thank you very much for that question. Yeah, in the back right there. Um, why did you pick the name Atticus to write under? Uh, great question. And I picked the name Atticus besides it being my real name. No, I'm kidding. It's not my real name. <laughs> Uh, I picked the name Atticus because of there was a there was a nation of Atticans in, e in ancient Greek, and they were philosophers and they were poets, and there, there was also an ancient philosopher named Atticus, um, and I found that really really cool. And, and above and beyond that, I'm a huge Harper Lee fan, and I love Atticus Finch, and you know, grew up with that that name. I've always liked it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, right in the back there, making you run for it. Can you speak um, briefly about the photography that accompanies your poems? Yeah. Um, they're beautiful. How do you select them? Who takes them? Yeah. Can you say that? Um, absolutely. So do you guys like the photos in there? Oh, I'm so glad, and thank you for saying that. It, it, uh, it took me a long time to find the photos. I wanted to put photos in the book. Uh, it was important to me, and I wanted to find photos that brought the words alive, and I wanted the words to bring the photos alive. And that was a really hard thing to do, and, and we filled our first round of Love Her Wild, had all these photos, and I, and I felt like the words were ruining the photos, and I felt like the photos were ruining the words. It just sent you in this wrong direction. And then I found a photographer, uh, a guy named Brian Castillo, and he's an incredible photographer, but his photos for me captured this fairy tale world, this fairy tale feeling that I wanted to, to put into my book, this, this, this idea of like the infinite youth or the infinite summer, um, you know, falling in love when you're young. And, you know, it, I just wanted to, um, to, to capture a piece of that. And I felt like this, th these pictures really, really did. Um, and so... I started working with him, and, and uh, actually two nights ago, it was, it was a, a lot of fun because he came to the talk, and his muse is his wife, so any of the girls in, in the, his photography is his wife, and his wife was the, the girl on Love Her Wild that was following. She survived. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so so it was cool to sh to show her to show her off. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, any more hands? Yeah, right here. Um, did I grow up surrounded by art? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, t to some degree, I, I think more than art, I was I was surrounded by nature. 
I was really, really surrounded by nature. I spent my whole youth in nature. All I did was build tree forts and, and run on the back, you know, the hills behind my house. And I think that that was the most inspiring thing. And then, of course, I, as I mentioned, I had my mom kind of seeding these these artistic, um, the, these books and these, these um, ancient poets and, you know, just seeding them into my life. And that was really, really powerful for me. You're a great listener. You just, you're a very good listener. You just, you just like stare and smile and make me feel good. So thank you. You guys are all very nice. <laughs> it's nice to be here. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you. Bet. So uh, you talked about music and how you turned to that for inspiration. So I was just wondering like which vinyls or what genre, which artists do you put on yeah. frequently? Okay, uh, that's great. And. Um, so for when I'm, it depends what I'm doing, but right. uh, for for writing poetry, it's it's very often jazz. I find uh, I'm a huge Jack Kerouac fan, and there's these videos on YouTube of of Jack Kerouac like reading on the road or like any of his books uh, to jazz on these jazz shows, and I can watch that stuff for hours. I really love it, um, and so that that kind of thing inspires me a lot um, to write for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What about you? Uh, just out of interest, what kind of music inspires you? Oh, I'm all over the place, but... <laughs> I mean, I am too a bit. Um, Ella Fitzgerald is my favorite singer, so... Oh, cool. It's in, like, the jazz genre, but, like, Jim Croce, Frank Sinatra, all of it. Yeah, yeah, All over too. the place, but, yeah. yeah. I love Edith Piaf, do you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. that French music? Or, yeah, yeah, love it. Uh-huh. It's really cool. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... You have a great speaking voice. Would you ever create like a video of you narrating some of your poetry? Um, thank you. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've, I've released a couple of videos on my on my Instagram page of just me narrating to uh, different poems to video. But uh, I would like to do more of that. I think um, I think that would be really really fun. Uh, certainly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I do have an audio book, and I did record, m- yeah, it is my voice. Good point. Uh, yeah. Both, both of the books I, I narrated, yeah. Yes. Hi. So I wrote down my question, but sorry if I mess it up anyways. Oh, uh, no worries. Um, so I was just kind of wondering, do you ever find yourself not sharing or writing certain pieces because it kind of ruins, like, the sanctimony of the feelings and, like, I guess really what I'm asking is how do you deal with the vulnerability without bleeding yourself dry? Like what kind of self-care do you take as a writer? Right. Yeah, vulnerability. <laughs> what, <laughs> I didn't hear that part. Um, yeah, so it, it's a good question. I mean, you know, I... I say, you know, I, I say that I that I started wearing a mask because I um, I so, so wanted to be true to myself, and part of that was because I was shy to be writing poetry, and that whole vulnerability thing is really hard, and it's taken me a long time to be more vulnerable and to to be to release those more vulnerable pieces, and even now I'm I'm sometimes like I I don't know if I can release that. It's like it's too vulnerable or be taken the wrong way, and and things like that, and and it's a consistent challenge, something I'm constantly dealing with that in trying to push myself to be more to be more vulnerable and to be more raw. And and I think I owe it to to people who read it to to, uh, try to go there. And so I've already been thinking about that in the, in the third book. How do I really like push myself to, to do that? And, um, you're, you know, you had a question of kind of about self care. And I think that, I think as you you get older and the more and more I get older, it's like, I don't really care what people think. And, and, you know, I want to, uh, write poetry and share quotes with, with you guys. Like, I don't really, if, if people don't like it, I don't want, to share that with them. I don't really care what they think. Um, and so uh, I, I think it's beautiful that we can, we can just have that, that connection. And yeah, so hopefully that answers your question. It did. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. And then I'll read some more poems, and, but I'll come back. This is just out of the blue, right? Okay, <laughs> so there are more women here than there are men. Why do you feel as though that m- men don't come to these things? That's a... R- that's a good question. Why do you feel like men don't open up more than women? I think it's a, I think it's a, a I think it's a problem. I do. <laughs> you know, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's so funny. Um, 
There are way more women here than men. Yes, that's true. Um, I think in our generation and certainly in, in our previous generations, uh, men are really encouraged not to be vulnerable and not to, uh, to, uh, to pursue things like poetry and, and they're certainly not their feelings or like the idea of love. And that's a really, really dangerous thing because I, I think that a lot of men can go their whole lifetime without really telling somebody that they love that they love them or how much they love them. And that's terrifying, not only for that man, but also f for that for that woman. Or you know, I'm I'm saying man and woman, but it's anything. You know, it's like um, I, I think it's a really really a, a shame. And and I hope I, I see. I see hope in in the younger generations, you know, these these uh, the younger kids who who really don't see the lines that that we've ha we had drawn for us or or that our parents had drawn for us or the older generations. And um, I, I do see hope in that in that sense. I think kids are getting more sensitive and, and caring less and that the kind of like masculine man and the, the feminine, you know, it's just it's just this beautiful spectrum now. And, and it's like wherever you lie you lie and it's and it's accepted and beautiful yeah that's a great question and yeah something i think about a lot mm -hmm. um any more questions or i can read a couple more <laughs> did you just kind of ask a question really quietly <laughs> oh read read okay yeah i will read thank you <laughs> that was very cute what if she says no asked the boy and the old man smiled. Best not live life scared of thorns, or you'll never find a rose. I want to know every part of you, every scar, every bruise. I want to trace the map of you, my fingers a compass, your freckles the constellations, which in my heart I will chart, so when I close my eyes, I'll have you in my stars forever. Every night I'd come to bed, and she'd be turned around in some magnificent position that only the most purely asleep could find. And every time I'd take a picture, filled with the overwhelming desire to never forget how much I loved the way she dreamed. If we were caught in a snowstorm, in a tent, on the side of a mountain, and things were looking grim, she was the kind of girl who would smile, bundle close to me, and say something like, Let's sing a Christmas song. Sometimes it's the ones we only meet in moments that stay with us the longest, never diluted by the imperfections of reality, but forever perfect in the perfect fade of memory. I love her because she steals my socks. I love her because when I find her in them, they never match. I love her because they're always too big and the gray part for the heel sits far too high. I love her because she wears them to sleep and the one always falls off and then she wakes in the night and can't find it. And her foot is cold. That is why I love her. I think, I, I wrote that poem because I, I th I think it's very hard for us to, to describe why we love someone, and it's not always the, the reason you might think that we love someone. And it's so often people's differences and their, idio their weird idiosyncrasies or quirks um, that become the main reason that we love someone. And I think that's beautiful. And it was actually uh, largely the inspiration for that, this idea, the, the title, The Dark Between Stars. And I think that, the, that there's celebration in that duality of not only this bright, the bright stars, but the dark between them, and the, the needed dark to make them bright. Um, and I have always thought that's a, that's a beautiful idea and concept. And, and um, it came from a poem that was written in Love Her Wild. It's one of the last poems. And uh, it, it went something like, she was that wild thing I loved, my dark between the stars. And again, it's that celebration of the person who's not, who's not the, per, you know, the perfect person, but they're perfect for you. They're, they're your kind of dark between the stars, if that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. 
I have a short s story to tell. Um, and I want to make sure that I leave enough time to, to meet all of you and, that want to meet and to take pictures and all that. Um, so I'm going to read one more poem, answer a few more questions, tell a story, answer a poem, and then, and then <laughs> we'll go to the signing. Um, but before that, put your hand on your heart. In you, there is power. There are ideas no one has ever heard of. There is the strength to love purely and intensely and to be loved back. There is the power to make people happy and to make people laugh. The power to change lives and futures. Don't ever forget that power and don't ever give up on it. Have you ever smelled a smell that brings you instantly back to a moment from your youth? I've always loved that feeling. I hope that's what death is just sitting on clouds, smelling old smells. A soulmate would be great, but at some point, I'd settle for someone who gets back to text messages. <laughs> that is the best response I've heard from that. Yes, thank you. Then text me, please. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love you. Um, <laughs> in all probability, there's a person out there that is almost exactly the same as the one you just lost, except they're a little bit taller, a little bit kinder, and a whole lot better in bed. <laughs> um, do you have any last questions before I tell my story? Yes. Would you ever consider doing a collaboration with Wilder? Because I know that she designed your website yeah. and she also helped you um, publish the videos that yeah. you've put on your page for The Dark Between the Stars. Yeah, great question. Yeah, she, she, Wilder's in, incredible. And she, so she, she did my her. website, if you've seen it, and she's, she does her own book, Wilder Poetry. Uh, she's an insanely talented poet and artist, and she's been so helpful and vital in 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 with Atticus. So, uh, yeah, I'd certainly, certainly think about doing something like that. Yeah, do you like it? Do you love her? Oh, I love her. Yeah. I, I really do. I love her a lot. Oh, yeah. um, I've actually had the opportunity to talk to her via DM, and she's very down to earth. She oh, reminds the me most, of you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's very sweet, sweet of you. Um, yeah, she's the most down to earth. She's just such a human, and it's a beauty. Yeah, she's, she's wonderful. God, I'm so nervous every time I ask you a question. <laughs> I just have one more. Um, <laughs> Oh. Am I blanking? Oh, stop it. Okay. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, am I blanking? Oh my God, oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> right now you write epigrams. Would you ever consider upgrading to writing a novel? And if you did, what would you write about? Yeah, um, a lot of people have been asking that. And it's something that's on the has been on the back of my mind for a while. I, I would love to write an, a novel. I would love to write a story. Um, and I would probably be a love story. <laughs> I, I would imagine. I mean, it would be hard not to be. So, yeah. Yeah, I would. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your questions. Um, yes. Uh, do you ever look back on your poems and read the same words, but the meaning has changed because you've grown as a person? Yeah, definitely. And it's kind of what uh, I was uh, saying before and that kind of like my relation to love is always evolving. And I think that that, that as I've said before, is a, is a human thing. And so I certainly look back and my, my relationship to the words has changed. And But I, I can kind of appreciate where I was at the time and, and what you know, it meant to me at the time and, and, and honor that. Yeah. Thank you. A couple more questions. Yeah. Right back here. So this might be like kind of strange, but so I really appreciate that. Like both of the books are very black and white and how some of the pages are dark and with the white words and vice versa. Would you ever consider, cause some of your poetry is very like whimsical and light and smitten, um, kind of switching it up and making it vibrant and color. Uh, or do you yeah. like the, do you like, I kind of like the black and white, but I'm just curious. Yeah, no, I, I've, th I've thought about it for sure. And, and, um, yeah, for book three, I think I'd, I'd like to do something completely different. So maybe that is maybe that is color. I'm open to anything as long as it it kind of graduates the the feeling and the experience. Uh, I, I'm definitely open to anything. Yeah. 
That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Sorry, I can jump back in. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite whiskey? <laughs> you had such a good look on your face when you did that. Um, I love I love Johnny Walker Black, but I love uh, I love American whiskey too. Jim Jim Beam. I love uh, Irish whiskey. Jameson. Uh, I love Japanese whiskey. Japanese is coming a long way. Yeah, in in their whiskey and uh, but you know I celebrate all sorts of whiskey. I really do. <laughs> What's your favorite? Knob Creek, yeah, yeah, great, great whiskey. I love Knob Creek, for sure. Um, let's drink some Knob Creek sometime. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't a poet? Um, I'm, I'm doing it. Like, I, I uh, uh, poetry is just a part of what I do. I do a lot of, a lot of things, and I, I, I love uh, Atticus and, and the poetry, but I do a, a lot of different things, yeah that I wish I could talk about, but it's hard. Uh, <laughs> I have to walk that line. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, I uh, maybe be a professional athlete, but I don't know if that was in the cards, <laughs> unfortunately. I could wear a helmet. Yeah. Who's that poet, <laughs> football player with the blacked out helmet? <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? And yeah. Um, yeah. I I um I love sailing. I love riding my motorcycle. Other hobbies are drinking whiskey. <laughs> Is that can that be a hobby? Maybe. Um, yeah. I, those are the things that I love and, and traveling and, and being in nature for sure. Yeah. Um, any last questions before? Yeah. Oh, way in the back. I love <laughs> now we want to pick it up. For the recording. Okay. Um, so we've talked a lot about your favorite types of poems and your favorite poets. What do you have a favorite novel any, from any era? Ah, good question. I, there's a, f there's a few novels. I have to say, so F. Scott Fitzgerald is, is my favorite author, I would say, top. And I've read Gatsby a hundred times and, and it's one of my, one of my favorite books. I've always come back to it. And he, F. Scott is for me, is just someone who can I constantly, I'll read something and just be like, wow, I can't believe another human put it's so beautifully he, he, you know it flows like it flows like music to me um and yeah so i'd say Gat, gatsby but i i love a lot of hunter's to, uh novels um uh yeah yeah hunter and, and f scott for sure thank you what, what about you um honestly it's to kill a mockingbird so is it oh it just, great it's yeah. convenient that i love your poetry <laughs> oh cool I, I mean that's another favorite i, I love that book it's yeah. beautiful Yes, one, yeah, last one. What does the last, um, the last quote meant to you? So we beat on boats against the current, waves it ceaselessly into the past. What does it mean to you now? Ooh, and so we rode boats against the current, ceaselessly, back and back, ceaselessly into the past. Um, I think it captures that, that, what a beautiful quote, and it, it for me, that last quote, of, it's the last quote of Gatsby, I'm sure you knew, um, but it, it captures this kind of uh, chase for perfection and, and chase for nostalgic. And, and like, I think you may have, like, pick up in my, in my words, like, I'm a very nostalgic person. I love that. I, I'm always looking back. And my favorite, you know, I feel like I, I, have you seen Midnight in Paris, you know, like how they're always trying to go back? And I, whoops. Uh, and I feel the same way. I'm, I'm always like chasing old, old times. And I think that, you know, somebody would say I wanted a better relationship with my, my grandfather died earlier and, I, and I've always been kind of chasing his, his ghost as it were. And I think it's for that reason. I love the cars he drove. I love the motorcycles he drove. And um, for me, that quote really ties into that and that kind of nostalgic looking back and that you, the, 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 even like ceaselessly into the past and you know i know i know f scott 
uh, meant something different. I've, I've read all the kind of like meanings behind it, but for me, that's what it draws out. Yeah, that's why I think it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Um, okay, I wanted to share, uh, if it's okay, a, a story because it, it was, it happened to me last week and it, it was one of the most profoundly um, human things that's ever happened to me. And, and, um, and so I wanted to, I wanted to share it and I think it's, in, for that reason, it's important. Um, so around two weeks ago, uh, a young lady reached out to me, her name was Jess, and she said, my, uh, my best friend, uh, Alina, is, uh, is, has cancer and, and she's dying of cancer. And she's a huge fan of your words. She's even got a tattoo on her arm. And um, the doctors are, are saying that she's not going to make it to the, the release of your book. And so what I'm wondering is if I could uh, get an early copy of your audio book, because she's not strong enough to read a book, but she's strong enough to listen to it. And that's all she wants is to, is to be able to listen to it. And so I was like, of course, of course, and, and we, we'll, we'll get you a copy, no problem. Um, but where do you live? Because I would love to come and, and read it to Alina in, in person. And she's like, well, I live in Florida. And so uh, the next day I flew to Florida. And by the time I, I got there, unfortunately, she would drifted out of consciousness. Um, but talked to her mother and um, her sister and the doctor. And they're like, she can still, she can still hear. Um, would you read? And they, they said, would you read the book to her? And so I, uh, I read uh, poems from the dark between stars and I, and I went all the way through it. And all the while hearing these incredible stories of, of Alina's life and, and the boys she loved and, and her two dogs and how the favorite thing, her favorite thing in the world was to, to get up early and drink a huge thing of coffee and with her dogs and, and then uh, watch the sun come up and then go to these, these uh, explore bookshops. And it was in, insanely powerful. And towards the end of that, um, her mother handed me uh, this book and it was a book of Alina's poetry. And, and when she got diagnosed, uh, she started writing. And it helped her deal with the pain. It helped her kind of put down on paper these th thoughts and, and, and come to grips with this, this, this idea that she was, she, she was going to die. And, and so I just decided to read her these poems. And I, and I read... Um, I read her, her whole book, and, and towards the end, I, I read this one poem, and I'll read it to you. It went, you want to see magic, she said, stretching out her arm in front of her. Touch my arm. As he circled her wrist with his fingers, he saw goosebumps go up her whole arm. Magic, she whispered. And at that moment, her mom pointed down to her arm and said, look, goosebumps. And she had goosebumps up her whole arm, and she had heard every word, and uh, we all just touched her arm. And then moments later, uh, she opened her eyes, and then she passed away. And it was, as I said, one of the most profoundly human sad um, and be beautiful moments of my life. And it was, it took, it's taken like a long time to deal with like how, what happened and, and uh, the purpose of it all. But there was, what I will say is there was something so beautiful in seeing all of these people that loved this other human and to see how alive she was in her in the people that loved her. She was just alive in them. And she's alive in her words. And I, I'm gonna, her biggest dream was to have her words out in, in the world. And I'm gonna continue uh, posting poems. And so if you see, ever see, her initials are AK. If you ever see those on my Instagram page, those are hers. And so um, if, you, if you love it, then uh, comment on it because she, she would've really loved that. Um, and. Last night, I don't know if any of you came to, to my talk last night, but her mom and sister came from Florida and 
uh, it was it was so beautiful to to see them and they gave me this this gift um alina bef- as soon as i i released that i was uh my book for presale alina ordered a copy and it arrived uh a few days ago and so i'm never going to open it but uh this is her copy of of dark between stars um all right <laughs> Sorry, I know that's an intense story, but um, it, it, it means a lot to me, and so I wanted to, I wanted to share it. I'm going to read one more poem, and then an, uh, I would love to, to meet you all. You are worth your imperfections. You are worth your bad days. You are worth your good. You are worth your confusion. You are worth your insecurities. You are worth fighting for and you are worth loving. And that's a fucking fact. (laughs) Guys, thank you so much for having me. Thank you.